Welcome to Money Making Conversations. I'm your host, Rashawn McDonald. It is important to understand that everybody travels a different path to success. That is because your brand is different. The challenges you face in your life are different. So stop reading other people's success stories and start writing your own. Now, you can be motivated by their success because their stories can offer direction and help you reach your goals through your planning and committed effort. My next guest is Eduardo Jordan. He was born and raised in St. Petersburg, Florida, and attended college at the University of Florida. I know he's happy right now because, you know, <laughs> that football team, you know, make it in the college football playoffs. After graduating with dual degrees in business administration and sports management, Jordan decided to enroll in culinary school at the Le, 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 Cordon, Le Cordon Bleu in Orlando, Florida, and his life shifted from business to food. Chef Jordan is a 2017 James Beard Award finalist and received the prestigious 2018 James Beard Award for Best Chef Northwest and Best New Restaurant for June Baby Restaurant. Currently, his Permental Cheese is in Whole Foods, Met Market, Ken Market, and more to come. Please welcome to Money Making Conversation. I'm calling a good friend because I've shared a meal at June Babies. I know how good it is. Eduardo Jordan. <laughs> All right. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, you know, I, it was funny, man. I was, uh, you know, my wife, our anniversary was it's in December last year. And uh, and so yeah. we were just trying to figure out a place to go. And uh, and, she, and I said, well, you know, what? Yeah, I, I, she had read reviews on your restaurant, you know. And uh, and your restaurant is really, the reason I love your restaurant because it's in the northwest part of the country, but it has a <laughs> southern menu, okay? That cornbread, that biscuits and all that. So tell us about bringing a southern menu to the northwest part of the country. And I want to tell everybody, the place had a line out the door. So I felt <laughs> fortunate to get in when I got in. And this was in the month of December of last year. So talk yeah. to about that menu coming northwest like that, Eduardo. Well, you know, I'm a classically trained chef. I um, always dreamed of opening my own restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, and I now have three restaurants, but my first restaurant was all about my culinary journey. It was right. about um, expressing my whole journey as a professional chef. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as I built my platform and, and had a microphone to start speaking, I realized that I needed to do more and share my story as an African-American chef. Mm -hmm. um, and I opened up the doors to June, baby. And yes, we're about, you know, 2,500 miles away from the <laughs> South. But uh, I'm here. I'm here in Seattle. And I wanted to express myself, my ancestors, my mom, my grandmother, all the foods that made me who I am. And so um, that was the birth of June Baby, pretty much. Now, uh, I know I mentioned something, a couple of things on the menu. Can you break down some of the Southern items that are on that menu from your standpoint and why you decided to, you know, I wouldn't say take a risk, but then that food, that culinary experience or experience, food experience wasn't up there. So I yes. have to say it was a risk. But you, you, but you, but you, but you, you did your sampling and you did it. Talk about adding different things and why you did it. Why I did it? Yeah, I mean, there, there's so much to it. You know, when when I opened up June Baby, Southern food was a cool thing again. And all the cool restaurants that were Southern were ran by white male chefs. Mm -hmm. And what I knew I needed to do is open up a restaurant that represented my perspective as a black man, mm -hmm. as a black chef, mm -hmm. um, from my perspective, from my lens. And so the foods that I ate as a youth is the ones that I wanted to have on the menu and right. done from a chef perspective still, mm -hmm. like elevated. Grandma went to culinary school kind of feel. Right. right. Um, so you'll see things on my menu like neck bones. We're talking about pork neck bones, you know, with rice. Had it. Um, <laughs> you're going to see chitlins on my menu. You're going to see hog maw on my menu. And we got some of the Southern classic staples like pimento cheese. Yes. And we got like boiled peanuts and fried okra. That Sunday fried chicken, things mm -hmm. of that nature are there. But I'm also opening people's eyes to like, you know, other ingredients that made up the South before the South became commercialized um, by these franchise restaurants. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Like Ben Seeds and, you know, the birth of various collard greens, not just one particular collard greens. You got like blue, blue vein collard greens. You got your Georgia collard greens. You know, you got you know, soft skin collard greens, you got your mustard greens, you got your turnip greens. So I'm bringing that all to light in this restaurant. And what I tell people is that, like I pretty much put on horse blinders and didn't let anyone distract me. And I actually made the food that I wanted to cook, the food that like my, I grew up on, the food that like I knew was my heart and my soul. And, and more importantly, good food though. Good now, food, now, amen. Now, <laughs> like, like I told everybody, when I went up there last December, uh, the restaurant was packed. Uh, the service was outstanding. 
Uh, no one out now say that because he knows. I just went in as a customer. You know, I didn't want to. I don't like going into an experience where you know people put extra shine on you because they know who you are and things like that. And right the service, the food was outstanding. You know, and uh, and uh, he also they also know I pay for my food. I don't go in there <laughs> looking for hey, a hookup or a discount because you're a small business. And with that being said, with COVID nineteen hitting small bit, especially <laughs> black or white. The restaurant right. business has been confusing as to how to operate under COVID-19. Talk about what's yeah. going on with your business right now. Yeah, I mean, this has been an up and down year, a blessing and a curse to a certain degree. Um, you know, sadly, we did have to close the restaurant down and pivot into the takeout program. Mm -hmm. um, my, I got three restaurants, like I said earlier, one of them is a small little grain bar, which was kind of like a, a overflow to June Baby right next door, mm -hmm. ser serve cocktails and little bites and everything. We had to close that down. It was a small location, so we can't even fit anyone in there technically under mm -hmm. the restrictions. So um, all the restaurants um, pivoted into takeout. Um, my first restaurant, Solari, we did um, a community kitchen for the first seven to eight months, feeding uh, families with food insecurities, um, restaurant workers, and those uh, who are displaced out of jobs for free. Mm -hmm. um, we served over 26,000 meals for free, and we're still doing um, small takes on that um, along with doing takeout. Um, you know, it, it sucks because like I lost a lot of staff. I had to lay off a lot of people to actually keep the business alive. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, those are the adjustments and the, and the pivots that we had to make. Um, but we're surviving. We're, we're doing OK just because we had to change our business plan to a certain degree. Um, I say that, too, because like there has been so many blessings this year in mm -hmm. disguise, um, you know, from from me being able to create my clothing line, my Chitlin clothing line to mm -hmm. getting pimento cheese into grocery stores to opening up, up other outlets to bring in revenue to one sustain me personally mm -hmm. as a business person mm -hmm. um, and then two to sustain the business so that I do have the opportunity to grow when this pandemic pandemic is over rather right. than um, you know shrink you know I'm, right. I'm still having a growth um, process in my head when I'm thinking about what's next for me and not trying to like you know cuddle up and, and, and sit back and like I'm I'm thinking, you know, I, I, I want to be able to succeed after this year. Well, you know, the thing about it that I love about talking to a small business person who had to pivot is that you've, you've learned some things about your business model, some things so that totally. you would not have made these adjustments. So what are the adjustments that you will maintain once we get to a sense of normalcy, once the vaccine's out there and people will be re-trafficking your restaurants. They're going in white neighborhoods, by the way. I want to let you know. His, his, his restaurants aren't buried. He's African-American. They're not buried in a black neighborhood. They're in white neighborhoods, which we'll talk about in a minute. But let's talk yeah. about the, the changes that you had to make and why. Right on. Um, uh, you know, there was a few changes that I had to make and things that I will keep in the long run. The restaurant industry, we, we survive on very thin, razor thin margins. And right. so um, our biggest cost to date is always our labor. So, you know, one thing I had to look at is either lowering the labor in the long run or increasing the revenue. Mm -hmm. um, and so means to, to be able to um, balance that out. Like we didn't we weren't a takeout restaurant before, but we're going to have to implement take out into our normal business plan in mm -hmm. general moving forward mm -hmm. um, so that we can at least if we're going to keep the same staff that we have the revenue to maintain that staff right. and also build a better profit in the long run so right. there's th those those are some of the ex auxiliary things that we are incorporating into our business plan also like the retail aspect um, adding in more catering um, projects. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all about you know bringing in more revenue at right. this stage now right. if we're trying to maintain that same uh, business costs. Um, you know, other than that, like, yeah, we're analyzing like what our costs were before and like how we can um, shrink those costs down. Like how can we run a restaurant less full service, but still offer the same type of service? Is that better training, better education for our staff so they can be more efficient? Are we bringing in more technology into our restaurant now so that we can make um, ordering and, and reordering and and service a little bit more streamlined. Those are all the things that we're thinking about and implementing right now into the restaurant to to make it sustainable. Right. You know, it's really interesting because, you know, a lot of small businesses, you see that that take out of that to go principle in the chains, you know, because they understand they, they understand that model. When you're a small business, sometimes you don't want to like, you know, you want to fight to hold that 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 flavor, that taste, that authenticity of the experience. And sometimes you're afraid. 
They're like, you know, will my chicken taste good at their house and I could potentially lose them as a customer or if they oh. were a customer, they may not come back. Is that right. is that some of the stuff that played into your mind prior to making these changes before COVID forced you? Yeah, you totally hit it. You know, as small business owners, we are super stubborn. A lot of times we're so stubborn because like we came in with a certain mindset and direction and we did not know how to pivot. We have been forced <laughs> yes, yes. to pivot and get creative again. Mm -hmm. And that allows us to open the doors to new opportunities and understand that like our way may not have been the only way. It may have been the best way at that point in time, but our new pivot, our new direction is going to probably be the best direction now. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like we, I was super stubborn before. There are certain things that I didn't want to do because like I'm chef. I didn't mm -hmm. want to compromise anything. I didn't want to see my fried chicken go out cold. Right. You know, it needed to be piping hot. It needed to be extremely the crispy. Bread, it needed to be the biscuits. The table Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> so all of that went into play. And then when I had to put chicken into a box, uh -huh. your takeout is a right. whole different mindset. <laughs> like, wow, like this can happen. We can right. do this. Right, right. <laughs> now, you're not, it, it really is it's really because, you know, you don't want There's nothing negative, but you didn't get in the business to be Kentucky Fried Chicken. You didn't get Correct. in the business to be Popeyes. And that mentality plays into I don't want to be that but unfortunately the times call for you to think like that to think about right mass marketing thinking about if your restaurant's packed and you can still do 25% additional income from people doing to go yeah. or curbside pickup you go wow I didn't have to pay anybody extra for this extra I didn't have to, to do that correct any. do the math at the end of the year and I guarantee you you'll start changing your mind <laughs> right right and that's what you've done <laughs> that I need to start thinking outside the box and that's that's the beautiful thing about it and so but then about then again it's all about who you are you're a successful African-American chef you know in the business uh, I always talk about uh, HBCUs there's so many there's so many people graduate from HBCUs and I would tell people white college to get credit for it because people don't know the amount of education that comes out of HBCUs because of the food network and cooking channel you start to see more co through competitions you're starting to see more black bakers more black chefs but there still is a hidden secret about who you guys are yeah. talk about that experience of being a successful uh, owner not only a chef, but an entrepreneur and an owner uh, in Seattle and the rest of the country. Because I've had Samuels. You know, I've, my show has become like a, a sounding board for uh, for high profile chefs and starter <laughs> chefs. And I like that. I really do love that. And so, But talk about your experience being a, a, a young man coming from the South, going north and being being nominated and also winning James Beards, which is the which is the Oscar of the restaurant business. Talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um I tell you what, I mean, I, I, everyone's like, you're so young. I'm like, I don't feel young anymore because <laughs> I've been through the hoops. I've ran through the fire. I stepped on the stones and cut my feet and bruised my knees and, you know, rusty old ashy elbows because like they've been working. I've been right. working hard, you know, mm -hmm. and I think people come into this restaurant industry thinking that it's easy. It's a novelty. It's like this is like what I want to do as a side gig. Um, this is a career. And mm -hmm. I, when I set myself to go into the restaurant world, I made it my career and was career minded. But mm -hmm. prior to getting into the restaurant industry, I went to the University of Florida. I got a degree in business. I understood that like it, it's, it's hard work, it's dedication, it's understanding the, the numbers. Um, it's more than just like cooking behind a stove. It's PR and marketing. Um, there's there's relationships that you have to build. There's networking. There's a friendly face that you have to, to have also that will open up these doors. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of chefs came in this mentality, came, came with this mentality. I'm cooking behind the stove. That's all I do. I'm making good food. Don't talk to me. Right. Uh, and I come, I come with a smiling face and ready to conversate and ready to share my story. Mm -hmm. And more than anything, like there is a story behind what I do. There's heart and soul. There's not me just cooking carefree food. Um, and so, like, there's a whole business, like, built into that whole, 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 like, bubble that I've just created that, like, it's easily um, supported because people believe in it. They see it. They understand it. They see a minority, a young black chef, like, in this industry, like, hustling his butt off. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of all of that. You know, it's a little right. bit of de dedication, passion, love, mm -hmm. um, grit. Like all of that is like, and we can go through and define all of that, but like all of that is packaged into like what I do. Well, two things I want to bring up: the Chitlin clothing line, which I knew yeah. nothing about. Okay, was that was it out when I came up there to visit your restaurant? It, it was. It was right in the beginning stages. We were um, we were looking for um, some tailors, some some um, designers. So we were we were. I was scrambling hard, like. <laughs> uh, 
I always got multiple things going right, on. Right, so like, right, right. You know, because I knew nothing about that. Tell us about that line. Was it t-shirts, caps? What is it? What is it? Yeah. So um, I should have wore one today, but um, I, I have a line of um, crew neck shirts or sweatshirts, uh -huh. um, some hoodies, and I'll be bringing on some other items. But um, chitlins have been a, a very intimate part of my whole story from from day one as a youth to me opening up June Baby, where. I ate chitlins all my life. Like it was part of like my my food. It's what my grandma um, cooked for us on you know these special days. Is what we Eduardo, had. Eduardo, don't act like you by yourself. I've been eating them too now. I my dad used to bring the hog to the house. Okay, nice. And we, and we cut it up. So we we got it bringing those intestines into the bathtub, cleaning and, them up. Oh my god! Water through. Come on now. The, you, you like that, that, that whole process, like, <laughs> I mean, this is a whole longer story. I don't even know how much time we have, but like, if you think about the techniques and, and, and ingenuity that went into like making chitlins into something edible, yes, like it, it blows your mind. First yeah. of all, for those who like don't know what chitlins are, they're pig intestines. Mm -hmm. You know, these are offals, the things that the, the white man got rid of and said the slaves need to eat. Mm -hmm. you, you can have that to feed your family. Mm -hmm. And so that story is like a lineage of like who I am. And when I talked about chitlins as a kid, I got ridiculed that I ate chitlins. So right. I kind of turned my back onto talking about my food. And so, you know, some 30 years later, when I decided to open up my own Southern restaurant, I decided to put chitlins on the menu and be proud and loud about chitlins because that is part of my heritage. Mm -hmm. So chitlins been on my menu since day one of opening June Baby. Mm -hmm. And I realized like there's a bigger story that need to be told. And so I proudly start putting chitlins on a shirt. Right, right, And then right. people said, I want that shirt. Right. <laughs> I want that shirt. And so I literally went through a whole trademarking process, got right. a trademark. Right. And now I have a um, chitlins line of clothing. Um, and we're 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 proudly talking about chitlins because it's more than just the food now. It's the story, it's the history, it's the the the, the perseverance, it's the the ingenuity, it's it's all of that that people, our people, many people eat chitlins, you know, across this world in in some fashion. But mm -hmm. you know, just talking about my history and my folks, it's just like what they had to do to make chitlins into something right. out of nothing right. to feed the family, to right. feed the country, right. growing cotton and rice and, and, and shucking okra and, and selling it and getting nothing out of it. Like, you know, this is, this is like just paying homage and, and, and paying respect and showing love and, it's more than the food now, so it's a story. It's a, it's a great story. And now, are you a white rice and hot sauce chitlins eater, or how are you? I, I, I am. My, that is a straight classic for me. I, I heard like everything else, like potatoes and oh, things. No. That, like I'm straight rice, hot sauce. I put some pepper on that. I tell you, yes, I, I, I love pepper sauce. I, I, I love chitlins, and so and like I said, I grew up, you know, grew up in the hood, man. My dad would go. Uh, he was a truck driver. He'd go in the country. Cause we live in Houston, Texas, we live in the yeah. hood. He go and get a, get a, get a hog and they bring that hog home. We made hog head cheese, you know, mm -hmm. had the, all the ham, all that stuff. We made the pig feet, we ate the pig feet, pig yeah. ears. We, uh, we, of course we did the chitlins. So that hog, I don't think that hog left that house. I, I think he came <laughs> in, Eduardo, and, uh, and left. But you knew when we got to the, to the chitlin part, Everybody in the neighborhood knew what the they knew what was going. <laughs> Everybody knew because you have to really and, and also when you talk about that, you really do have to clean it out. You have to clean yeah. that because you know so, so, this, it can get you. You can get sick if yeah. you read if you as they say you uh, eat chitlins that haven't been cleaned properly and stuff like Correct. that, and bar properly and things like that. So it really is a science to all of this, and that's why I wanted to make sure. And I'm kind of mad at you because now I got to go online and get when I could have been up there and took a photo with you. When we took yeah. a photo together, could have held a chitlin t shirt up, a uh, 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 shirt up, a hoodie on. But I, I'm definitely going to order one online because that's exciting to me because I'm a big fan and I tell my staff I eat chitlin. They go, Ugh. yeah, exactly. I'm just, that, don't, don't, that, don't, that, don't that's what me. I got as a kid. It don't phase me, brother. Don't even. Me, and, I, and I forgot crackers. Now, now it doesn't phase me. Now it doesn't phase me. I, I think like as a kid and not like even teaching my little boy now, it's just mm -hmm. like, don't be afraid of your history and your story yes. because yeah. like as a kid, I didn't know how to defend myself at that right, moment. Right, right, and, right. And now we, we give our, we give some fire, we give some weapons now to be able to professionally um, defend ourselves now right. uh, in our history. Now let's talk about the pimento cheese, which I did t sample at your restaurant, which was fantastic. Yeah. Like I said, I'm just tell you when I when we sat down, 
we ate. We went through the <laughs> we, we went through the menu, just enjoying everything. I don't think I don't think chitlins. I wasn't seasonal. I don't think they were on the menu at the time. But the, but other than that, we tried everything and enjoyed everything. And 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 the whole experience was the service. But now the pimento cheese. Tell us how they got started. How they became a signature dish. And how did you yeah. get it into Whole Foods and Met Market and Ken Market? Totally. Um, wow. That the secondary part was the whole process of getting to the re retail store, but mm -hmm. um. But pimento cheese for me was just like, you know, it was that iconic Southern spread. Yes. You know, you, you got like your, your hog head cheese spreads that you can have sometimes and mm -hmm. you got your pimento cheese. Mm -hmm. um, and pimento cheese is like everyone knows pimento cheese. Everyone had it. Everyone goes to that corner store, or even a grocery store in the South. And there's like five different pimento cheese yes. you can pick from. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had a ton of pimento cheese in my lifetime, mm -hmm. but nothing really impressed me. Right. And so my <laughs> mission was like, if I'm going to put pimento cheese on the menu, it's going to be the best pimento cheese out there. And um, when I developed the recipe, I knew it was a winner. And, um, you know, we've had it on the menu again from day one, like chitlins, and people requested it. They like ask, can I get tubs of it? Can I, when are you going to get this into the grocery stores? And mm -hmm. when COVID hit us and the pandemic kind of slowed right. us down. Mm -hmm. um, I was already in talks with Whole Foods um, by doing like, we were gonna do this special uh, event with the pimento cheese. And so they pretty much held my hand through the whole process of mm -hmm. getting it into um, Whole Foods. And we're, we're locally here in Washington and right. Oregon State right now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we're working hard to find a co-packer that we can get into California and then go nationwide. So. Um, soon, soon to be, soon to be in get, your neighborhood. Get back down south to uh, Texas and Atlanta, and Georgia, and all yes, that South Carolina where, where it belongs. Hey, where it so belongs. when I say that, when I say that secondary process is so hard, it's so hard to like jump to that retail, mm -hmm. um, retail aspect, the consumer goods. There's so many loops and, ho and hoops that you got to go through. Um, but we're we're working hard to get it nationwide within the next year. I'm talking to uh, Chef Jordan in 2017, James Beard Award-winning finalist, and re received the prestigious 2018 James Beard Award for Best Chef Northwest and Best New Restaurant for June Baby Restaurant. That's where I dined with my lovely wife and had a great time. And I, I, I love to be able to say that, you know, to be able to say I, I went up to Seattle, Washington, and, you know, it's been a weekend out there and dined at your restaurant. That's one of my favorite travel stories and, 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 and building your brand out you know and I we talk about the pimento cheese we talk about the chitlin line we talk about pivoting and, and doing things that you were stubborn about doing from an entrepreneurial standpoint you say hey this is how I want my brand to be be uh, served and now you realize okay it still will be served that way but we're now with options and uh, and options allow you to be so I like the fact I like about the pimento cheese and I like about the t-shirt I call that mailbox money you know people can go <laughs> online buy your t-shirt you get a check in the mail you know, yes, sir. that's the beauty of what you're trying to do with your brand. And that's why you're growing. That's why I can't wait till it, you know, you expand and come down in the south with that pimento cheese because that's yes, amazing mailbox money. But mailbox. I, oh, mm -hmm. law, man, uh, you know, we we know what what, what the, as a black business owner and uh, the PPP checks were supposed to be distributed out there to the small business owner. How did that affect your business during the COVID-19? Were you able to participate in PPP or what? Yeah, I mean, it was a scramble at the beginning. We we missed the first round, and I say I say that lightly because we did everything proper and appropriate to get that loan. And so, like, we were we we're literally pulling our head our hair out, um, right. saying like, what are we gonna do? Luckily, they had a second round. We got approved. We didn't get approved from as much as I I, I thought we were gonna get approved mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a kind of a turning point for me. I I, I realized that. As a business owner, a small business owner, as a minority business owner, I could not depend on anyone else saving my businesses. And right. I needed to do whatever I needed to do right. to be creative enough to keep my businesses alive. And that's when like, the pivoting started happening hard for me and making the proper adjustments to, to, to be a business person. Um, and I didn't depend on the government to bail me out. Um, and, and some people need that. And, like that's it's, it's the curse of 2020, but like, I didn't want to be part of that curse. I wanted to like, actually capitalize on this opportunity to, to be a really good businessman. And right. we've done well, mm -hmm. despite this pandemic, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've had many opportunities. I've actually, I now became 100% owner of all my businesses Congratulations. in 2020, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm going to go back years from now and say like during a pandemic, I was able to become 100% owner of my businesses. 
Like that's mind blowing for me. Right. Mm -hmm. But yes, we've had some hurdles. We had some hiccups. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, this year has been a blessing and a curse, but it, it has taught me a lot. I have grown a lot, mm -hmm. seen a lot. Well, cool. Well, I, I did something during the pandemic. I bought me a building in Atlanta, big old yes. office building, a one acre property, standalone. And in it, it has a full kitchen. That's why I love this building. It's a full kitchen, the oven, it's everything, you know. And so I've been inviting favorite uh, chefs like you over the over over the past few months saying hey i'd love to do a zoom zoom you cook something i cook something if you have times no pressure yeah you know, I, i'd love to i'd love to cook some chitlins in my office and all just right. run all my staff out <laughs> you're gonna run them you're gonna run them out the office <laughs> And why well, I know, I'm going to run them out. The I fire alarm care. going off I, and everything. I, I don't care. I don't, I don't care. I'm going to run them out of my office. You could be in Seattle, Washington. You could come. Look, they always, they waving me off. Not the chitlins. Not the chitlins. But I love to do Anything that. Anything else. I, I love for us to do something via yeah, Zoom. Yeah, no, that's you awesome. Know, and you, and you congratulations to you. Yeah, yeah, because that's where I'm at. I'm having fun with my life, man. I'm having fun to be able to speak to people I would call a friend. I call you a friend uh, because of your business. Businessman, your entrepreneur, you're understanding that they are some setbacks, but they don't beat you. They you don't let them win. And totally. like, again, like you said, you've taken control of your voice, your business, your brand. And I had to do the same thing. You know, it's like, you know, I, I, I had to buy in this building and, uh, and allow me to finally stamp my resume of what I can do and what when people are confident, what I can accomplish when people come to my space and they walk in the door, they go, wow. Okay, so right. the resume, they see the image, they see the image awards, they see these posters, autographed famous people I've managed over the years or been associated with this year. And that's all you're doing with your brand. And so so I, I want to thank you for coming back on the show. I know we missed uh, last yeah. week, but Eduardo, man, you're one of my favorite, man. I, I love you, man. I, I, I Like I said, I support you. I, I need to get a link for the Chitlin t-shirts. Yes, now, you, go they, to, you go to JuneBabySeattle.com cool. and we'll then go that. to our shop area. Now, can, are, are, now, are the uh, pimento cheese, is that being shipped? Or it can only be bought we, we're, we're working on getting that ship so like okay. in the meantime um you know give us about a month or so we, okay. we will we're starting to um get a process to get that shipped out um to nationwide well so. let our team know immediately and then we'll schedule a time and figure out something real, real easy to make just have fun talking and you make it your way whether it's cornbread i do my cornbread yeah. down and you we do, do have it Atlanta. ready for you we'll, we'll do that and get it hooked up so thank you for coming on the show eduardo my pleasure brother <laughs> we talk soon okay that's my yes, man sir. eduardo he's june baby restaurant so y'all to watch it. he wants some chitlins he got it up there in the north wheat northwest part of the country because he's from the south again this is Rashad mcdonald i'm your host if you want to hear anything on money making conversation please go to moneymakingconversation.com or subscribe on my youtube channel